When he lived at home with me, we were wrapped up in the 911 system. Every single day he was going to and from the emergency room at Hunterdon Medical Center. They would put him in four-point leather restraints and give him a shot of Haldol, and when it kicked in, they would discharge him home. In the group homes, restraint was a daily thing for him, whether it was chemical or physical, because they could not find programming that was able to manage his unique behavioral challenges. Tyler ran away. It was freezing one night. I was actually working at a hospital, and my parents were babysitting, and Tyler ran away from their house in a t-shirt and a pair of boxer shorts. My mom had called to say Tyler ran away, and I said, oh, all right, call the police, you know. I don't know what else to tell you. I really gotta finish work. And I was called out of work every other day and at risk for losing my job as I'd lost so many jobs prior to that because of his behavior and Hunterdon Medical Center was calling. We have Tyler here to pick up. I said, I'm not picking him up. You need to get him in a psychiatric facility. He needs some type of help. I can't do this anymore. They said, if you don't come pick him up, we will press charges against you. The Division of Youth and Family Services came knocking on my door the very next day to say, we can't place him. And they said, you have a court summons, you have to go to court. So the judge ordered Tyler for a 30-day respite to the Hunterdon Developmental Center, advised me to get an attorney and come back. And all charges were dropped, and the attorney ad litem did a ton of research, and he came up with Woods. I came down and I toured Woods and I had just been through so much with him at home and with the group homes and at that point I was hoping for a miracle. It was the behavioral patterns that were learned that needed to be changed and Woods did a really good job with that. By the time Return Home New Jersey rolls around, he was doing so incredibly well. I was totally agreeable. They said they would have the same supports in place in the community as they have at Woods. Once that became the reality, they brought him home, and within days, it just started to fall apart because he didn't have the supports. It became a nightmare. It became a nightmare for me. Constantly, every single day, I had to, I'm, I'm his guardian, I had to go down and sign paperwork. Every time he was at, went to the emergency room, I had, I had two small children at the time, and it was, it was a nightmare. I had been fighting to have him come back to Woods, and when Tyler came back, he now qualified for employment. Woods has the TWE program. If they work and they produce a certain amount, they're paid, and he can earn money if he wants to, and if he doesn't want to, they kind of keep him there and give him other activities and things to do, and it's a safe place for him to be during the day. And he knows that if he wants money to do things, and Tyler likes to spend it. So they create an incentive for him, but they don't hold him to regular employment standards. Since Tyler has returned to Woods, he's resumed his treatment and has developed a lot of skills that he didn't have when he was trying to live in the community. He has improved self-care. He is employed. The staff that is with him around the clock is able to help him regain control before emergency services are needed. <laughs> the Middletown police came to Woods to do an event where they were meeting the residents and trying to learn how to work with the developmentally challenged population. Tyler formed a very unique friendship. They put together this program of education for the police. And Tyler has been going to the Middletown Police Department, educating them and teaching them what it's like to have autism and how things are in his world and the unique behaviors that they have, especially the behaviorally challenged. He's doing wonderfully, but he wouldn't be if he was put back into the community because the daily supports are needed, reinforcement every single day, and there's just no measure, no measure for people like him. There's a huge population of severely behaviorally challenged folks out there who need more intensive support than any community group home could possibly offer. Anybody who thinks that being in residential placement is unnecessary doesn't really know the needs of the individuals. The community is a scary place when you don't have the skills to navigate it and the people aren't going to be accepting of your disability or the behaviors that come along with it. 
I think everybody deserves to feel safe and secure in their home environment, whether it's on a residential campus or in the community or whatever supportive system they need around them.